All right, now that I have um, created my full bounce, and I bounce it within Pro Tools just by simply recording um, my whole mix bus uh, track or auxiliary into the full bounce uh, stereo audio track. Now that I have it, I'm going to set up my mastering session. Now, again, uh, make sure that your mastering session is going to be the same sample rate and bits uh, bit size as your regular recording session because we're going to use the dither plugin to uh, bounce it down to 44.1 and 16 bit um, format to put on the CD. So I'm going to, within the same folder of the session, I'm going to create a new session. And I've already created a uh, another template um, for my mastering in 96, 20, uh, 96 kilohertz and 24 bits. I'm going to use that template and I'm going to click OK. And we don't have to save this one because we already saved it. And again, within the same folder, which is the song I was working with, Nothing Like You, I'm going to go in here and call and just leave it as Master 96 Colors 24 Bits. Click Save. And it's going to open. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do here. Um, so I've already set up these uh, tracks for mastering, which we see we have Enhancer 1, Enhancer 2, then we have two tracks if you want to bounce uh, different versions of the mastering um, into Pro Tools so you can reference them later and compare the two and then again I have my uh, master output and then my master bus which is going to be the last piece um, in this chain of uh, layering these different uh, auxiliary outputs and what I'm going to do is since there's no music in here I'm going to open up my uh, workspace and I'm going to find that bounce track for my mixing session so let me go ahead and find that and we got let me see this nothing like you 96 kilohertz I'm going to go to my audio files and when I scroll down you see we have full bounce and since it's 0 2 that means it's the second version of the full bounce I'm going to grab the full bounce uh, second version and it has two files and I'm going to simply just drag it into my tracks window and it's going to import this track so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move it all the way up before my enhancers and I'm going to um, route the out of this full bounce into my enhancer one and the reason is because it's going to go from the enhancer one which is see the input here into enhancer 2 which you see here enhancer 2 input now the enhancer 2 is going to the master bus which the master bus is right there and it's going into my master bus track which is the last chain again in this and there's going to be different uh, plugins that you can use uh, you know you can throw another equalizer onto the track is going to be very subtle though you know I start out I don't use presets here basically I just you know will turn up uh, the highs if I need to a little bit or take away the bass depending on what I want to do with mastering um, again it's going to be very subtle changes I may throw another uh, compressor on there you have two different types the enhancer too well I may expand the stereo with again you know turn up the percentage or turn up the volume um, and I may use an enhancer for the lower high gain. And then the final master bus, you see, uh, I throw another maximum on here, a limiter. Um, and then I have different measuring techniques. Now, when I use face scope and the music is playing, let me go ahead and uh, play some of this music. Uh, what I'm looking for here is basically not going above. 10 uh, decibels, negative 10 decibels. So the beat in the mastering session will be around 15, 16, as you see. And then once the fo vocals start, it'll get into like negative 12, negative 11 notice. And again, you know, this is what we're looking for the decibels. Now, what you may also want to do is bring another reference track into your master session and see, uh, you know, how decibels compare to your mix and your mastering session because, you know, usually you mix um, and master according to 
a song that you've heard or has, has been already released professionally mastered in the CD. So again, it's useful to use reference tracks in this. Um, now when I actually bounce this master session out of here, um, because we're in a 96 kilohertz uh, sample rate and 24 bits, I will use my dither plugin here at the end. Um, so let's go ahead and activate that. And the dither plugin has to be the very last plugin in your um, chain of sound. So make sure it's going to be in the very last track. And the reason it's here is because this master again uh, uh, fader is routed into this master bus. So turning this on. I will, you know, choose a 16-bit and no noise shaping, and uh, this is going to dither down to a 16-bit resolution. And out of this uh, Master 96 killer track, when I finally bounce the track, I'll just simply go to File, Bounce to Disk, and now I can bounce it to my WAV file at uh, 44.1 kilohertz. And I always leave. Uh, the conversion option convert after bounce because it, it uh, uses it's not going to process it during the re uh, bouncing it's going to do it afterwards uh, which can eliminate certain errors that can happen I mean they seldomly happen but they can happen so you want to do it after the bounce and take a note that if you're going to be bouncing into an mp3 in Pro Tools you want to turn the dither plugin off you want to make that inactive because if you're bouncing into an mp3 uh, the mp3 engine within Pro Tools already has its own dither plugin and the compression um, processing that it applies from a higher uh, killer track into a lower one so you know make sure you uh, take a note of that uh, a note about mastering is that um, you will probably never achieve true mastering in a home studio like in my basement for example I mean I'll do the best that I can with this type of session but for true mastering uh, you know I've been told and I've experienced this on my own is that you want to take it to an engineer that has the correct acoustical space um, for mastering and will probably use you know some uh, analog compressors that he's going to send the signal through and other um, equipment that may cost thousands of dollars so many times you're not going to be able to achieve a true mastering session inside a basement studio or your home studio you know but that's the reason I separate my master session from my mix session because now that I created my mix session which you can see in the mix template and session video I can uh, take that whole thing to a master engineer and he can create his own uh, full bounce and take that into his mastering session and do it correctly. So that's the reason I separate my mixing from uh, mastering. And another reason is that, you know, during mixing, I'm not going to achieve the decibel levels of a master track, which we call the, you know, the competitive uh, volume of professionally mastered tracks is going to be slightly lower. That's why I use the master session again to uh, continue the routing and expansion of the sound. Uh, which will increase the volume and is going to do it in a subtle way through all these buses and mix buses that I use and the end product is going to sound high quality and very clear as opposed to um, you know distorted everything all the plugins and maximizers and limiters on one track so if you got any questions on anything specific let me know in the comments I hope you enjoy, uh, enjoy this video um, including with the first part of this video and I will see you guys very soon